And we will start the class as usual with a little bit of a warm up for your hamstrings. So take your yoga strap, bring your body down on the mat, and then take your yoga strap behind your right leg and extend out your left leg on the floor, and then go up and down, mo moving mostly to lengthen out the muscles a little bit, not, not a super stretch, just to get the idea that they could possibly lengthen. You may be cold from having not done some activity today. So we're just gonna see what it's like to easily straighten the leg and down again. We'll go eight times now on the other leg. And then the yoga strap will be here for later for some stretches. So just make sure your knee is directly over the pelvis and that you have not uh, tucked your tail, you're in neutral spine. Move your head right and left and lengthen up the back of the neck and feel what it feels like to keep your chin a little bit dug in toward your throat. And one more time, and we're gonna go and start our bridges. So move your yoga strap aside. And then uh, before we start a bridge, place your hands on your hip line and then move one leg away and bring it back in. This is another way to warm up the hamstrings. You're just gonna alternate heel slides. Keep the foot flexed. I'm gonna do another adjustment here. Okay, and now bring the heels both close to the bottom. Bring your arms down by the side. We're gonna do eight bridges. We'll do three or three of them with our arms down by the side and curling the tailbone. Then we'll vary things. Take a breath for preparation. On the exhale, use your abdominals to try to pull your pubic bone towards your rib, feeling like you're sinking your belly and all the work is down here in the low abs. You haven't come up yet with your pelvis. Now hold that position as you press on your feet and curl the rest of the way up to a nice flat line bridge. Stay there as you take your breath. And on your exhales, feel like you're laying down each vertebra independently, one at a time down into the mat, not lowering the lowest part until it comes in line. So neutral spine, breath for preparation, draw the navel to the spine and pull the pubic bone towards that place feeling your low abdominals pulling the pelvis. Take another breath, exhale, curl farther using your hamstrings and your glutes pressing on your feet. Keep your ribs held in, then held in towards your pelvis. Breathe here and exhale, roll down, articulating, relaxing each vertebrae goes to the mat. You should not feel stress in your arms or shoulders. You should be really squeezing your glutes at the end and then relax the glutes back into neutral spine. Remember, the first movement is not a glute movement, squeeze. It is the last movement to let go, but not the first one. The first one is pubic bone to ribs or to navel, drawing in the navel, and then peel the spine off the mat, opening up your hip line. Stay there as you take your breath, and exhale, roll down, articulating your back. Each vertebra is coming down, squeezing the glutes to keep the tailbone up. You can use your abs there too, but it is a lot of glutes. Now we're gonna cross our arms above the chest. Take a breath again, draw the navel to the spine and pubic bone towards the ribs and continue exhaling as you peel off. So now the focus is a little more hamstring because the arms aren't helping to stabilize. Take a breath and exhale. Start to lie down each vertebra into the mat, relaxing in the shoulders, relaxing in the low back, relaxing in the pelvis, land into neutral. Breath for preparation again. Exhale, abs and pubic bone towards ribs and curl. Feel like you're bringing the pubic bone closer to your ribs even as you press up the pelvis and open your hip line. Breathe in and exhale, start to travel down, articulating your back, relaxing each vertebra. Don't tense the ones above, the ones that you're working on bringing down. So it could be that you're relaxing those vertebrae coming down, but you've tensed the upper ones that already came down. So try to focus on both things at the same time. That was uh, six total. So now we're gonna go two more. We're gonna do two more without the arms in neutral spine. We have no hands on the pelvis to notice if we're in neutral. So I'm gonna give you a hint. Take a breath for prep. On your exhale, draw your navel in so you feel a cinch tightening around your waist. Press on your feet, suspend your pelvis up to the ceiling. Feel like your hamstrings and glutes have done this. Breath for preparation. 
Exhaling, hinge at your hip line. Aiming your tailbone towards the mat without arching your back more than it was before. The pelvis should land softly, then put all the weight down on it. Breath again for preparation, neutral spine bridge. The belly pulls in without changing the spine shape to protect the back and then press on the feet and suspend the hips up. They should feel not too hard since you're using your legs a lot and your feet anchoring. Take a breath and exhale, hinge down. Good. Okay, and now take your arms to the back of your head, interlace fingers, elbows wide, tight legs together. The legs are gonna tip to the right as you take your breath. And exhale, they pull back to center. And the legs tip to the left as you take your breath. And exhale, that's the movement. Now, how do we do that? First, the knees go over, the feet stay together, so the left foot's not on. And now the hip comes off, and then the waist comes off, and then the low rib comes off, pulling against the anchored shoulder. Now, pull the ribs back. You should feel your abdominals start to bring everything back to center, going in reverse order. When we tip to the left, the right foot comes off, the knees go over, the hip comes off, the waist comes off, the low rib come off, comes off, and the right shoulder stays anchored. Now really pull the ribs back in. You should feel the turn on of the oblique muscles, like you're pulling a rope and bringing it to center. Twist to the right as you breathe in, and exhale, pull in. Feel that progression of events. First the knees and the feet go over, then the hip, then the waist, then the ribs. Exhale, reverse, ribs, waist, hips, knees, feet. We go to the other side. One more set, twisting right, inhaling. Exhale, ribs, waist, hips, knees, and feet. Over, feet, knees, hips, waist, ribs, reverse. Abs, pull the ribs back. That's the most profound part of this. The rest of it is just following that intense work. Separate your feet. So last week we did a test of your ability to keep your spine neutral, or rather your pelvis in neutral while doing a chest lift. We're going to advance that lifting of the legs at the end of the chest lift if your back does not hurt. Your head is supported lightly with your hands so you can feel the weight of 10 pounds or so in your hands. Elbows a little bit to the ceiling, shoulders are down, you're in neutral spine pretty much except for the head a little forward. Now feel like your low back imprints, that's your focus, and floats the upper body up just a little bit. It doesn't have to be intense. Stay there, inhale. We're gonna go two times with nothing, then we'll add our legs. Breath, well maybe we should do four. So we lift the head a little bit, pull the shoulders down towards your waist, imprint the low back into the mat and the low ribs, and feel how the upper body comes up because of that. Breathing in, exhale, roll back down. Breath for preparation, the head lifts a little, the shoulders depress. And then we move the low back into the mat, pulling the waist inward, raising up the chest, take a breath. And exhale, lower back down. That breath should be into your back and side ribs. Last one this way, the head lifts a little bit. Feel that low back go from neutral to imprinted, suspending the upper body up. Stay there as you breathe in. And exhale, go back down. We're gonna go six more times. Um, this time, maybe four, we'll see. Um, this time floating the legs. So the head comes off a little bit. We do the same thing imprinting the back. And as you feel this, you should feel intense work in your abs to the point where you can lift your legs and bring them all the way to tabletop. Draw the belly in, no change on the back and lower the legs. If this hurts your back, do not do that movement of the legs, just stay with the chest lift. Breathe for preparation. Exhale and imprint the low back into the mat. Really fully keep yourself as lifted as you can by imprinting the back and then float the legs up to tabletop and back down again. Hold right at the lowering. That's the hardest part. When your legs come close to the floor, really pull in the gut. Breathe in, lift the head a little bit and exhale, imprint the back and curl forward towards your legs. Lift the legs as you breathe in. Keep inhaling into your back as you lower and then exhale, go back. Use the inhale support for your back. Inhale for prep, head lifts, and exhale, imprint the back and curl upward towards your legs. Lift the legs a little bit, maybe, or lift them all the way to tabletop. Check out what your body can do. Maybe one leg goes down, then the other lower back down. Let's do a modification. You can take advantage of that. Lift up the head a little bit, imprint the back, curling forward towards your legs. 
Hold that position, pulling in your belly, lift both legs off. And then when you come towards the floor, maybe lower one and then the other and take a little load off that. One more time, that's our last one. Then we do a variation on chest lift with rotation. Head lifts off, imprint the back, peeling a little bit of the spine off the mat. The abs pull in, they raise the legs. Then we lower back down, maybe one at a time, stay there. Close your legs together. Twist the legs over to the right. Exhale, curl upward straight. And then bring the legs off the mat and pull them back down two inches. Lower the head. The head goes straight forward. I'm actually aiming for my left hip because my knees are over on the right side of my body. Take a breath, lift the head, curl upward towards your legs, hold that belly in and suspend the legs two inches off the mat and then back down there, still in the diagonal, lower back down. Three more times for five. Exhale, curl upward, shoulders down, lift the legs a little bit and come back down and lower back down. We breathe for preparation again, the head lifts off, anchor the shoulders, curl upward towards that left hip and lift both legs a little off and put them back down. And then back last one. And exhale, we curl upward, lift the legs, put them back down, stay there. Cross the legs through the center. Cross the legs over to the left. The right foot comes off. You're opening up space on the right side. Lower your upper body. Five times. Lift the head a little bit. Exhale, curl upward towards your right hip. And then raise the legs a little off. Be stable there. Try not to let that lifting of the leg move your body around. The head lifts off. Exhale, we curl upward towards the legs. Abs are working. Lift the legs a little. Lower them back and return your body. Three more, the head lifts off a little bit. Exhale, we curl up and lift, shoulders down and lower. And we go again, two more, head lifts off. Exhale, curl upward, lift a little legs, lower a little legs and bring yourself down. Last one, breath for preparation. Head lifts off a little, shoulders pull down, curl yourself up. You should feel your low back on the left. Mm, probably just on the left as you lift both legs off because you've raised up your low back from the right side. Come through the center with the legs, lower your body down. That was an intense warm up on my upper abdominals. My lower abdominals got it on the last one. So that's a lot of really good work. And let's take uh, four preparations for the 100 with just bringing legs down on the mat and then we're gonna bring the legs up to tabletop and you choose whether you wanna finish the 100 with your legs in tabletop or diagonal press. Do whatever modification suits you please. Anchor your shoulders away from your ears. Paddle fingers so you really close the gaps between your fingers. Breathe for prep. Exhale, curl upward towards your legs, reaching your arms low along the side seams of your shirt and then return yourself back down. Inhaling, exhale. Inhale, return. Again, exhale, we curl up. Inhale, return. Again, exhale, we curl up. Inhale, return. Raise right leg tabletop, left leg tabletop. Squeeze the legs together, fingers again, take a breath for prep. Exhale, curl upward to the tabletop, reaching forward. If you'd like to extend the diagonal, we are there. Six sets, inhale. Exhale, three, four, five, inhale. Out, two, three, four, five. Shoulders are away from the ears massively. Keep reinstituting that. Exhale, three, four, five. Two more sets, reaching fingers long. Exhale, three, four, five. Last set. Out, two, three, four, five. Knees in, head rests, tuck your chin, turn your head right and left. Feel the tension release. And let's hold on to the knees and circle the legs around. And reverse the circles. <clears throat> and we're going to put our legs down on the mat, bring the right leg up to the ceiling. Let's put the right leg straight up, hands behind the leg, bend and straighten the knee two times. 
If you would like to do the most extreme work, you keep your knee, or rather your heel, pushing to the ceiling. That will encourage your quad to fire to keep your knee straight. So if you would rather, you may point your foot, but I'm gonna flex my heel today. Across the body to my left shoulder without the hip coming off on the right. Circle downward towards the right foot, back up to the right shoulder, back up to the head, across again, and back up. We do five of each. We go across, this is three, and return up, and make your quad feel like something is bringing that leg up to the top of the head. We go one more time for our fifth stop at the top. Reversing, kicking over to the right shoulder, downward towards the left shoulder and up to the head. Try when you do this not to move your left hip at all. It's gonna to wanna to pull outward on the beginning of the movement. And again, pull outward, feel your quad lighting up to make that leg go high. One more, and then this circle brings your leg all the way to the other foot. And then we bring the left leg up. Bend and straighten a couple of times to let go of that back of leg. Hold that leg up straight and flex your foot. Bring that straight leg upward towards your head first, and then across the body, right shoulder, downward towards your other foot, and then up to the left and up to the head and to the right shoulder, downward towards the foot, and then back up again. You can use the sense of your right leg pressing into the mat to make your torso stable. And we go one more time this way. Make sure your abs are drawn in. And then reversing your circle to the left shoulder with the foot, downward towards the right foot, back up across the body. As you do that upward arc, feel your quad pulling your leg upward. Feel how that inhibits your hamstring length, or rather it inhibits your hamstring period, giving you more length. This last circle goes all the way to the floor. We're gonna take a roll up. If you do not do roll up, roll to your side, come up to seated and do your abdominal challenges. That's landing in a lay. Inhale, come forward, exhale, roll up. Inhale, roll back, shoulders down, and exhale, we go. We'll do eight of these. Inhale, coming forward, exhale, roll up. Inhale, roll back, exhale the rest of the way. Keep sensation of your curling your spine into itself, rounding your low back, keeping your shoulders down. Inhale, roll backwards. And exhale, each vertebra tries to touch the mat with the control of your abs and your back and your shoulders. We go again, inhale, come up. Exhale, roll up. Inhale, rolling back. Exhale, roll the rest of the way down. We're gonna change the next four. Inhale, come up, curling forward. Roll forward, straighten your back, raise your arms up into the air, lean back, flat back until you kind of can't sustain it. Your legs feel like they're gonna come off and then around your spine and roll down, lowering your arms towards the, the first position, the coming forward position. Three more like that. Inhale, come up as much as you can. Exhale, roll up. Lift your back, arms up straight. Lean back, flat back. Anchor the shoulders. Roll through your spine, lowering the arms so that you can make the roll back down nice and smooth. Two more like that. Inhale, upper body. Exhale, roll up. Inhale, sit up and move the arms up. Stay for the exhale. Now inhale, go back. And exhale when you have to. Last one. We're gonna stay up. Inhale, come up. Exhale, roll forward. Straighten your back, raise your arms. Bring your arms to the side. Lean back slightly, grab your knees in your hand, and transition to rolling in a ball. And go. Eight times, roll. And again. Drawing your navel in to make you lose your balance so that you go with the momentum 
that's naturally created. Keep your gaze forward. Don't look behind you. Try to keep your heels close to your bottom. Draw your navel in to control the rolling back and the rolling up. Keep your shoulders down. And now we're gonna go one more time, then we're gonna stay. Hold here. Extend out the left leg. Put two hands on the right leg. Right hand, well, let's see where they have to be. You're gonna roll yourself backward with the left leg sticking out in front of you. I'm gonna move my hands to a little behind my knee and I'm gonna slowly get my back down. And Lanny and Elaine just get to this position. Right hand to the ankle, left leg is straight, switch. And this is single leg stretch. Eight sets, one, two, this is two. And third set. And fourth. And fifth. Keep pulling in the belly. Six, seven, eighth set. Hold there, take your hands to your head. Let's go right into crisscross. Right knee up, left knee, and right, and left, and right, and left, and right, and left. Two more sets. Okay, we rest for a moment. Ah. We have double leg stretch scissors and double leg lower lift to finish. Bring the right knee and the left knee into the chest. Bring the legs together. Curl your fingers over the shin area, kneecap shin area, and then raise your chest upward towards your legs and feel like you have integrated energy here. Your arms are pulling towards your chest. Your legs are trying to escape. There's an isometric here. So every time your hands meet your knees, make it be an isometric. Arms and legs extend, circle the arms forward, grab the shins. Again, inhaling and exhale. And inhale and exhale. And this is four, we go to eight today. And five, shoulders down when you reach. Inhale into your back. Last one, and rest your neck. Turn your head right and left. So today, instead of doing hamstring pull, one, we're going to do hamstring pull two, which is supporting your head but not supporting your leg. So you might get a little bit of work in your psoas and hamstring. I mean, not hamstring. Hamstring will be challenged. Quad will be working. Psoas will be working. Abs working. Curl your chest upward towards your knees. Extend your right leg to the ceiling and your left leg down onto the floor with a light touch of the heel. Pulse the right leg into you. One, Two, switch, left pulse, switch. The other leg stays not pulsing down on the floor, but light touch. See if you can do one thing with one leg and the other thing with the other leg. Very small pulse in the air. Keep the abs in, keep the chest up. Two more sets, right, right, left, left, right, light. It's hard for me not to bounce my lower leg and we rest. Rock sideways. Feel like you're rolling like a log. Tuck your chin. And then let's get up to last one for our fifth abdominal work exercise. We're gonna bring the, oh, what happened to my, me? Okay. We're gonna go to uh, diamond legs. This is double leg lower lift. Curl your chest upward towards your legs. Hold your position with your chest lifted. Lower the legs away from the body. This is a lot of low abdominals and psoas work. And then raise the legs back up. Lower the legs away, inhaling. And then exhale. Curl your chest a little higher too. Inhale, lower the legs away till you feel the challenge is about to fail a little, and we go, you're about to fail a little with the challenge, you're right on the edge of being successful. I still want you to be successful, pulling in the belly, not letting it bulge. And this is one more time, lowering the legs away, and raise them up. Oh la la, that's a lot of work. All right, so now let's go to 
Oh. All right, so we're gonna save this next one for another time because we're a little bit tired and there's too many abs that we just did. Curl your upper body up, take one roll up, and let's come to a sitting um, spine stretch and spine twist. Sit forward facing your camera. Okay, hands are on your, actually have your legs be narrower, <coughs> excuse me, narrower than they are usually. So instead of a wide second, bring them just about the width of what your mat is. Arms are on your legs. Take a breath. Pretend you're peeling your spine off a wall. Rolling through it, <coughs> letting your arms drift toward your feet. Inhale, we're gonna lift the upper back. The arms won't come up very high here. Not at the beginning. We're just gonna bring the upper back up. The arms will come with you. Lower the upper back, arms go back onto the ankles, and then you stack your spine back up. A little bit of water, sorry. Tom has a fan on me, so I don't decompose here, but it's making my throat dry. We go one more time. Breath for preparation. Exhale, curl your chin in towards your throat and feel how that lengthens the neck. And then it should lengthen or feel pulling on your spine to require it to lengthen as you curl forward, pulling in your belly to prevent yourself from collapsing in your waist. Inhale, lift your upper back up. Exhale, roll back down again, hands on ankles and roll back up again. We do it again, exhaling, roll down. Arms come up as the body comes up. Arms go down, the arms stay on the legs, and you stack your spine back up again. Last time, this time, we're gonna stay there for a little and we're gonna raise the arms higher. So go forward as far as you can. Inhale, lift your upper back. Soften your knees a little so you're not so strained in your hamstrings and bring the arms higher up there and hold. And just hold, growing longer in your spine, trying to get your shoulders down, but your ribs and your pelvis disconnected from each other. And with this intense lengthening idea, you're gonna pulse the arms back for five and four and three and two and one and feel like the end of the arms. If I look at myself in the camera or in my screen, it looks like if I have one arm of V and it comes down to about here, it's above my belly button, maybe at my, just where that little xiphoid process happens in your sternum. And if I looked at the, the same place on the back of my body, that's where it feels like my arms end. They don't end at my shoulders, they really work my back. Now I'm gonna round my spine and let my arms go back onto my legs. And now inhale into your back and exhale and inhale into the back again. And exhale and go inhaling into the back and exhale. And now bring the legs together and we're gonna stay here seated for spine twist. Let's do today with the palms facing up and the arms into a nice, stretched out position. If this is stressful on your shoulders or elbows, you go to this goal post position, this is okay. You just wanna make sure that your, arm is, your arms are straight line, that you don't crease at your shoulder line. So I'm thinking only of the way I am turning. So no offset feet, we're gonna to turn to the right with two little pulses, breathing in, right arm and shoulder comes back, two pulses, inhale, exhale to center. Inhale to the left, trying to drag that, right, that opposite arm backwards. So I'm keeping my left arm back as I go to the right. And I'm keeping my left right arm back as I go to my left. So I have like a pole between elbow to elbow across my back. No offset feet, sitting taller, growing longer in my spine, good postural muscles, good for anti-bucket seats, anti-slumping chairs, and one more. And then we come forward and relax and breathe into your back. Okay, so we're gonna now do an exercise, tiny bit more abdominals after we do a bridge. 
So let's start by rolling backwards, roll through your spine and come back down onto your mat, bend your knees and place your feet on the mat and bring your heels close to your bottom. Take a breath for preparation. Exhale, curl up the tailbone, open your hip line, bring your right leg straight to tabletop and then straight up. Touch the ceiling with your leg and then drop the left hip, actually the whole hip, both sides and then push up. It's just the left side that's working. Trying to touch the ceiling again and down to the floor and ceiling again using your left hip and ceiling again and hold, bend your right knee, placing the foot down. Left leg up to tabletop and then to straight and we down to the floor and raise up and down. And as you raise up, try to touch the ceiling with your foot and lift and one more time and lift and hold and breathe and roll down through your spine. Bring your right leg into your chest and then your left leg and let's rock sideways. Okay, so let's just do a grab behind the knees today. Roll up to a seated position and stay in, in a suspended, getting ready for a teaser shape. So let's hold this for a moment, our teaser, and then open your legs and put your legs back down and see if you can control that a little bit, a little bit of hip flexors. So my legs are going to be a little bit wider than the mat. Those of you who have been on the wall towers or the Cadillac, this would be your feet up against the uprights. So we're gonna pretend we have a push through bar in us, we're gonna create some isometric energy. One hand is stacking over the top of the other. As you're in this crossed position, Notice that you've opened your back a little bit and your shoulders have to stay down so they don't hunch up like that. So now I'm gonna lean back, flat back. I'm gonna take my, I should do the other way, right hand over left. I'm gonna take my right arm out to the side, reaching out long while my left arm reaches the other way. And then I bring both back together and I sit up tall. And I go, do whatever you can on that shoulder. Let's actually left hand over, leaning back, turn the palm up on the left hand and reach out with that and turn your head in that direction. And then come back and place it underneath the right hand. Sit up tall. Lean back, flat back, the way we did on that, those roll ups that we did earlier. And now turn the right palm up Turn your head towards the hand as it reaches out while your left arm reaches forward. And then we come back. We come back to sitting tall. One might ask, why am I doing this exercise? Because guess what? I'm in my car. I'm reaching behind me to the back seat to get a bag or my license or my water bottle. And I have to make sure I'm good at this. And we stack up the spine one more each side. Lean back flat. Remember, we don't want to round the spine here. Flip the hand over and reach and pull the other side. Feel this energy and feel your legs working to keep you steady back again, sit tall. One more, lean back flat, shoulders down, left hand flips over so the palm is up, reaching out, following the hand with your eyes, come back to center and then you're done. And you now have a little bit of quad work. We don't need to do many more teasers today for that. So. We are now gonna go from this to an open leg rocker. So bend your knees, place your hands behind your knees, and then straighten your legs. I'm gonna move my pants a little bit to your challenged position for your open leg rocker. The legs should ideally be straight and the arms straight. Do what you can, even if you're not doing rolling, just do this, Lanny, right? Just stay in this position without your hands, okay? Make your abs work, roll. Roll up, lift up the chest. Pull your belly in and roll. Whoop. And three more times, pull in the belly, roll. Two more. One more. and hold, and then, and come down. 
On this one, this is going to be bearing weight. So you could be bearing weight on your elbows. We're gonna do a press up of the pelvis. It's very little when you're on your elbows. Do your best. This ideally would be on your hands. Okay, so those of us who can bear weight on wrists, we're gonna do leg pull back. This is just lifting the pelvis into a straight line. Keep your head in line with your spine, gazing your eyes forward. Anchor your shoulders sitting tall. And finger, fingers are pressed outward and not inward. We lift up the pelvis, going where, looking where the body takes us, and then come back down. I'm not sending my eyes behind me. I'm not tucking my chin. I'm strengthening my neck by trying to keep my head in the same alignment. Gravity is doing the job here. Open your chest to the ceiling and come back down. Two more, just four of these. And we go again, pull up. Last one. And we go, anchor the shoulders, abs are working, press up, and then come back down. And then bring your arms forward, relax your back. And then let's just do a little biceps curl to fold those elbows again. It's a lot of stretch through the elbow and the lower part of the biceps. Okay, so now we're gonna roll right over to our right side. And today we're gonna do a kick forward and back, a la classical. Your right elbow is going to be on the mat. And if you look at me in the, in the camera or in your screen, my elbow isn't directly under my shoulder. If it were, I would be here and I wouldn't be able, I would have a very hard time trying to find a T-shaped line between my upper arm and my spine. So I am now here on my right hip. My feet are a little bit in the front to the front edge of the mat. And I'm gonna look down at my feet and make sure that they are in the same plane and that I haven't lengthened out or shortened one of my legs. My knuckles are together. Raising the left leg just to hip height. With a flex foot, kick it forward, one, two. Point as you go to the back. This is a lot of work on your core. Keep your right shoulder down. This ballistic movement of the kick can throw you off so you control your abdominals and your back and your shoulders not to move. And again, kick, kick, and exhale back. Keep going, kick, kick. We'll go to 10 today. Right shoulder is hard to stay down. Two more, and back. And one more, and back. And let's keep the leg to the back. Put the left hand on the floor. Put your right hand on the floor. So this is a flat wrist. Nicole, it's flat wrist, so you don't have to be in a wrist position. You can be wherever it's comfortable. Kicking the left heel back one, kicking for two, anchoring the shoulders, being a very nice looking position. So you can have a photo taken of you and you go, oh, that looks good. Nine and 10. Lie back down on the side, and let's do just the drops to the front. So we're gonna bend the right knee, bring the left leg forward, and drop to the floor, down and up. Two, and lift. Three, and lift, and four. Notice that nothing moves anywhere in my body, just in this joint. There is no shifting of the waist. Nine, and 10, keep going. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's 20, and bend the knees and give a little rub there. And we're gonna lie down on the back and cross the left ankle over the right knee. Reach forward if you wish to stretch through that hip again to make it more intense. You can also keep your leg down on the floor and just do a, a, a nice, Hip stretch this way, your choice, please. Flex your left foot, however, and make sure your ankle bone does not stick into your thigh. Rolling a little bit to your right side will give you a different stretch in your left hip. Enjoy that. And then let's disconnect. And we are gonna roll up, twist our bodies around, and roll back down and go to the left side. So up on the left elbow, feet are at the front corner of your mat. Remember you are looking for a T shape. So if my spine and my skull and my nose and my belly button 
We're all a vertical line. My horizontal line is my shoulder elbow to elbow. So you want to keep that way. Remember, look at your feet, make sure they're aligned. That is going to be integrity in your bottom waist. Remember, you're not slumping into the floor here at all. You're lifted up on that bottom waist. That's what gives you the legs being the same length. Let the right leg come up, flex foot, kicking twice, one, two, and exhale to the back. Breathe in, go forward, and exhale to the back. Inhale, kick, kick, and exhale back, and breathe in. Without the stability of some other part of the body, it's really hard for me to get my leg behind me very far. And we go again, kick, kick, but I'm trying to keep my abs in to support this extension of my hip. Two more, and back. Last one, keeping that left shoulder down, and back. And now let's roll over slightly towards the front, and a little bit of rotation in the joints of the hip, and maybe a little bit in the waist. We're gonna kick that heel back for 10, two, and three, and four, keep going, and five. Get a proud position here, don't slump. Use your muscles to hold this. Make it maximize your workout. And that was 10. Lying down all the way on the left arm, bend the left knee, bringing the right leg forward, hip height. Remember, left waist still has integrity. And we go down and up, two and lift. Remember to relax the right foot, and four, and five, up, six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, keep going for 10 more, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and bend the knee. Oh, yes. Okay, so now, what was the last thing we did? Was that it? Figure four stretch. So let's cross right ankle bone over left knee, flex the foot, make sure the ankle bone does not stick into the thigh, and then be in neutral spine here as well. Ooh, a little bit of a roll over towards your left hip. And if you feel like pushing out on the knee, you can do that too to get a little bit more stretch or pull the leg in. You know by now what you like on this stretch. Remember all things. Every time I do this stretch, I have to remind myself to keep my neck long so I don't end up with a nice crimp neck for stretching my lower body. You wanna pay attention to all these factors. Now we're gonna go rolling up. Do I wanna do this from now? We're gonna roll up to a seated position and then I have to look at what my note says for the next one. Okay, so we went, oh, maybe we can do that transition. So let's everybody get up back onto your left side and see if we can make this transition. I forgot this one. So you're gonna roll over to your left side again, bend both knees, get up onto your hands and knees into quadruped. That wasn't too bad. We're gonna do a little cat-cow to lengthen out the back. So remember that your cat-cow is not just a, oh, I'm stretching my spine. I'm using my muscles to support and lengthen my spine when I do this. So the image I have, my hands are a little bit wider. And Nicole, you can still do this on your elbows. You can round your spine and go back to flat. So we go, abs are working, drawing the navel, dropping the tailbone, and letting the head fall. Feel like you're making a bridge with your body. Stay there. Pretend now that someone grabbed your hair on the top of your head like a ponytail, and maybe you had a tail, and they're pulling it out from the center of your body, and therefore you are straightening your body. Now pull in your belly and just gently raise up your tailbone a little bit, and your head a little bit to arch your upper back. Feel how that is working your abs against this arch. Draw the belly in even more, and let the tailbone and head drop for your cat stretch. Pull your shoulders down. And then we go again, back to lengthening out the spine and then a gradual, just a tiny lift of the tailbone in the head, pulling the shoulders down here. And we go one more. Okay, so we're gonna think about, I'm gonna spend a little time here talking about the alignment of the shoulders in a plank position and what's too much? So let's see if I can manage to see myself in the camera here. I think I can. So when I put my shoulder, when I sink, my shoulder blades are winging, my head and spine have fallen forward, and my arms and shoulders still staying the same height, 
So there's a lot of what I would call winging of my blades. When I bring my chest to the ceiling and I try to connect my shoulder blades to my ribs, I can go too far and make, look in the mirror, make this kind of hunching of the upper back. That's not a good thing. That's really involving some other muscles that aren't necessarily just stabilizing on the shoulder. So from that little winging blade, just feel like your shoulder blades touch your ribs and you're kind of held in a flatter line. So now holding this, extend out the right leg and hold your plank on that foot, and then extend out the left leg and hold your plank on that foot. And with your arms, pull yourself towards your hands. With your arms, push yourself towards your feet. Stretch your Achilles and your calf and through your foot. And with your arms, pull yourself forward, shoulders here, abs are working. Push yourself away and pull yourself forward and push yourself away one more time and pull yourself forward and push away. And now hold position. And now we're just gonna lower down all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way to the floor. Okay, so now let's do basic back extension. We're gonna add a little bit to this. So take your arms to a goal post position, tuck your chin down, and <clears throat> take a breath for preparation, pressing on your forearms. Notice how your shoulders engage here. The front of your chest engages. This gives you some integrity. Now your nose is pushing a little bit along the mat until you're gazing to the top edge of your mat. Notice that is enough. And now travel the work a little bit farther down your spine into between your shoulder blades, pulling in your belly to support this action of the upper back. And then lower down the sternum, the collarbone area, and then tuck your chin and let your head rest. Make sure your elbows are wide enough to support relaxation here. Pressing on the elbows and forearms and the hands, notice the shoulder work, supporting the lift. Push your nose a little along the mat and lift up your back and look a little bit forward. Don't go too far. And then go down. One more time. This time, the arms are going down by the sides of the hips, so you have no arms to help you. The palms are facing the ceiling. You've relaxed your shoulders. Now, draw the belly in, palms face inward on the hips. The upper back lifts off the same way, but you have no help on your arms. This is all your back. Hold, lower yourself back down. Relax the arms and shoulders. One more time like that. Abs work first, they never stop. Palms face in, the shoulders have integrity. The head lifts off a little, the upper back comes up and the abs are working. Now bring your arms to a T position. We're gonna add a little bit of side bending to this. So just like you're playing airplane if you're a child, I'm gonna side bend towards my right. My left arm is coming towards my head and my right arm is coming towards my foot and I'm reaching both those really far away from each other. And then I come back to center, back to my T position. I'm gonna to twist to the left, bending sideways there, floating above the mat, reaching my right arm forward and my left arm towards my feet. Come back to the center. It's just a little bit of side bend play. We usually do it differently. We're gonna reach. Usually we just do it with the upper body without the arms. We're getting a lot more upper back work here for the shoulders. Go to the left, side bending left, reaching the right arm and the left arm away, and then place your hands under your shoulders and push yourself back into a child's pose and take a stretch. Watch two more breaths here. Okay, so we're gonna do Double leg kick. We're gonna lie down on the back, on the stomach again. <clears throat> Clasp your hands or lay one palm over the top of the other. You can do it like that too. And turn your head towards the screen. That for me is my right side. So you're just gonna have to turn your head the other way. When I say left, if you're on your left now, you understand. Let the shoulders relax here. If you can, my elbows don't come close to the floor. Some people's do. Do whatever stretch you have here. 
And then we're gonna kick with belly pulled in a little bit to support the um, top of the psoas muscle and the back arch. Squeeze the legs, lift the knees off, kick three times to the bottom with both legs. Kicking one, two, three, and then stretch back. Reach the arms long towards the feet, looking straight forward, keep your belly in. Turn your head away from the screen, relaxing elbows, kicking three, two, one, and press back. So the thing we're wanting here in every part of this exercise is that the hip flexor line is flat to the floor. Turning head right, kicking three, two, one, keeping that hip flexor from popping off when we kick. It would be easy to do. Keep that pubic bone and hip line open to the floor, kicking three, two, one, on the other side and lift up. One more set to the head right, kicking three, two, one, and stretch back, lifting up the back and turn to the left, kicking three, two, one, and stretch back and lift. Place the hands back under the shoulders. Push yourself up using your hands. And then round your spine. Stick your tailbone down. Tuck your tail under and lengthen out your low back. I can't quite hit the floor or hit my heels here, so I'm just gonna bend where I can. Tuck my tail and open the back. And we're gonna rise back up with that another cat stretch for the back. And hold now, arms straight out in front of you. Hips in the air, <clears throat> excuse me, for happy puppy. And let's take an arm through, putting the head down on the floor and that shoulder down on the floor, keeping equal weight on both feet, extending out the the opposite arm stretching out and feel that stretch. We did a lot of upper back shoulder work today. So this stretch feels really nice here. All those suspended arms. And then we come back out, stretch out long and bring the other one through, reaching out really long here, putting the head down one side always feels more easy for me to twist. These classes are giving me an opportunity to discover these imbalances in my own body. One more each side, please. <clears throat> and this will be our last one. Reaching through. Okay, so that was pretty good. We didn't do too many fussings in the middle of those exercises. We're gonna do one more stretch for our um, IT bands, uh, lateral hamstrings, and some inner thigh stretch. So let's just take your yoga strap, put your, put, uh, whichever foot you like, it doesn't matter, into the yoga strap, and bring your other leg down on the floor. I like to put a loop at the end of my strap so it makes it easy and I don't have to straighten my shoulders. I can use my biceps to control this leg. I don't have to reach crazy long. Okay, so the leg is really straight. <clears throat> Hold it as straight as you can away from you so you know it's straight. And then gradually pull the leg to you until you feel your hamstring limit. At this point, push your foot into the strap without the strap moving. You should feel your hamstring light up Slowly relax that push without disturbing the foot placement, and then pull the leg a little closer to you after that relaxation. Do two more like that, pushing your foot into the strap. This is a contract release stretch. Relax your neck, pull the leg in with the exhale. One more, push against the strap, take a breath, and exhale, pull it in as, as far as you can get it. That got me about four inches of stretch. Take the a strap in the opposite hand, bring that same arm as leg out to the side and bring the leg slowly across the body while keeping tension on that band so that your leg is as far up as it can be. Don't let this roll to your spine. This is all the outer hip, uh, lateral hamstring. And then return to the center, switch feet in the strap. We're not gonna do our outer leg that way, we'll do them evenly. I mean, my, our inner thighs. So extend out your other leg on the floor, bring that other leg up to the ceiling, make the leg really, really straight and pull the leg really close inward towards you. 
And then when it's about at the limit of the hamstring, in neutral spine, please, push the leg in or the foot into the strap, and then bring it towards you on a relaxing exhale. Inhale, push into the strap again, and then slowly relax it so you do not jerk this around. One more time, pushing into the strap, breathing in, exhale, relax, and that's about as far as I can get. The arm as the leg goes out to the side, the opposite holds the strap, and bring the leg across the body for the excruciating IT band release. And as you exhale, the leg should fall more. Oh, it feels so good. All right, so now let's take both legs up into the air. Bring your, uh, I like to bring my hands to about my ankles or my lower shins. My, that gives me a place to put my elbows on, out on my inner thighs. So I'm gonna keep my inner, inner ankle bone, or inner big toe joint and heels together. And then open my hips out, like as if I were sitting on the floor with my feet together and my knees are trying to touch the floor. I'm just gonna press out. And notice if I'm rolling to one side, does my back feel the same hip to hip? Do I feel tighter on my inner thigh on one leg than the other? And then holding this, transfer your arms just to your inner thighs, releasing your lower leg, and then straighten your lower legs out or your feet outward so your knees are really straight. And this way you can press on your inner thigh. So this is inner thigh medial hamstring. Flex your feet for some additional line, kinetic chain line, all the way to your big toe joint. And then fold your heels together, bring your knees in towards each other, grab behind your knees, roll yourself up to a seated position, and you are done, my wonderful class. Thank you.